what's up what's up what's up so before i get into this video i want to mention <laughs> i don't know if you can hear my dad uh singing over there but before i get into this video i want to mention that these next couple or this clip is probably gonna be different quality and uh different audio than the camera because i'm currently recording on the iphone i don't have my camera because i was debating whether i should take the wheels home or bring the car and install the wheels here but i think i'm just gonna take the wheels home start the video now and you know bring the car and you know do what i'm gonna do but the camera's at the house yada 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 so i don't have the camera on me anyways so before we get in this video i want to give a quick shout out to my boy derek i will put his ig name right here down below he is actually the one that was able to put the 21535 on the cerberus um I want to show you guys the way that the stretch looks on the wheel before I put them on the car because I don't know if you're going to be able to see the wheels that good. But let me see if I can adjust the lighting because I know on the phone you can, you know, do all kinds of shit like this, like this, like that. Anyways, so let me turn the light on. So the 215.35 on the 10 inch looks like this. It's almost the same amount of stretch as the 225. But I mean, you can notice the stretch a little bit more. But I could most definitely tell that there is more of a stretch. Um, I did notice the height difference from the 225 to the 215. Yeah, the 215 sits a little bit lower than the 225. I mean, I can most definitely tell that this, there's more of a stretch. You can see like the like the lip, the inner lip, a little bit more on, on like on the inside of here by a uh, on the inside of the wheel. It's a little bit more visible there. But I mean, if you look from like a distance, I mean, it looks kind of the same. But, yeah, I'm about to take the wheels home right now. We're going to put them on. Uh, no cap. It's like every time I look at the wheels, it's just like, fuck. I fall in love with them more and more. I ain't even going to lie. Like, I kind of wanted to switch up the game a little bit, change wheels. But, like, now that I look at them together, it's just like, fuck. I'm falling in love again. Bruh, this is, like, one reason why I don't like driving the fucking truck. Like, it fucking fogs up so quick. It literally takes at least, like, 20 fucking minutes for it to, like, be frost and everything, like. Bro, I want to drive. I don't want to be waiting in the truck for like 20 minutes. And please hurry up. Shit. What's up? Welcome to another day in paradise. So we're back at the shop. Uh, next day. So this is the way the 215s look from like, you know, kind of like a, like a distance a little bit. Not bad. I guess it kind of even the car out like from a distance. But I'm still going to lower the front a little bit. I'm probably just going to lower just like... I don't know, maybe a quarter inch to half an inch just to get that fitment looking a little bit more right, but uh, yeah. So basically the fitment is currently sitting kind of like this, just maybe just a little bit lower, but I'm going to try to lower it to get the front looking more like this, maybe just like a tad bit lower than this, but I'm trying to go for something like in this kind of like a, this range right here. So let me jack it up and take the wheel off. All right, so I'm always getting asked what coils I'm running Megan Racing. I, I, I don't know if it's just Megan or I don't know if it's Megan Racing. But anyways, I'm running Megan's. And I'm always getting asked, how do I get so low? Well, I'm running true coils and I don't know. And I know for some cars, it's the spring on the bucket. Mine is not like that. Mine is like this front and back. So what I did at least on the back i haven't done it on the front yet to get that extra low because i guess some people are saying that they can't really go that low on the megan's what i did was um the spring the two lock rings up here i basically loosened both of them and i just dropped the whole spring you know basically towards the bottom and everything and that pretty much like lowered the uh the back more because that, that's at the time that's when i was tucking you know people would always be like oh bro you're gonna ruin the preload it's it's gonna actually raise it up instead of lowering it yada 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 this and that i was like you know what fuck it i mean the only way i can actually see what's really gonna happen is if you know obviously i try it so i tried it and the stiffness is the same like the dampening it's exactly the same as to when the spring was up here but now the springs down here so that's pretty much what i did it rides exactly the same but that's one way how i got that extra low on the uh, on the megan's another thing what i heard was which i don't want to do yet is you can take these two lock rings out like complete like take the whole bottom piece out and take the lock rings out and the spring will completely drop to you know like the bottom i'm not gonna do it for the front because then i'm gonna be stupid 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 low which like i'm more likely gonna be dragging oil pan everywhere but for the for the back i actually was gonna do it because 
Um, the spring is actually like right here and the two lock rings I literally got like like that much room left So I was just gonna take them out and like tuck a little bit more But then that's when I painted the car and I actually raised it up to go fender to lip instead of tuck So now the spring went from like right here to like right here But that's that those are the two ways that I can think of doing on the uh, to get the extra low on Megan's You can't cut the uh, the actual you know like strut the middle of the strut because there's gas in the in the, uh, in the shock itself so it's not hollow so you can't really do that and that that's pretty much the only couple of th you know the two things that you can do at, at least as from as far as what i know and i do got to flip the ball joint to get an extra two to it's like two to three degrees of camber i haven't done it yet um but i still got to do that and my honestly personal opinion i'm running godspeed front upper camber arms fucking trash i fucking hate them one time i was swinging and the bolts up here I actually swapped, uh, I'm only running camber arms in the front, nothing in the back. So th this is literally all I'm running, just coils, front, upper camber arms, and that's it. Nothing, th the back is just completely natural, you know, like camber. Anyways, back to the control arms. I real. I personally think they're shit. For one, you can't get that much camber. Two, um, the bolts up here, they were actually little Allen bolts. And back when I was, you know, like slammed, I don't know if you could see like the yeah you can see the indentions up there from when the bolts were you know like the, the whole control arm was like bottoming out and everything. Well, anyways, I went swinging one time, and like the bolt I don't know what the fuck happened. The bolt snapped. Like it okay so it uh, factory it's being held on by six bolts three on each side one here three here three here, um, five of them snapped and the fucking wheel went from negative to damn near completely positive and like the wheel was about to fall off. So that's another reason why I don't like the Godspeed camera arms because the bolts are shit. So I recommend if you're gonna get the the, the camera arms, I highly recommend that you, you know, change them out to thicker bolts because that shit was no fun. Like I thought I was gonna wreck the car for sure. All right, back to this. So I'm actually missing one thing. Let me go get it. There you go. That's a lot better. I was actually uh, missing the measuring tape. So it's really simple to lower the coils. If you guys you know are new to coils and everything, um, it's not really hard. I highly recommend that if you're going to drop the car when you first get the suspension, do it before you put it on the car because that's before, you know, like, that's when the, the fucking, the, the strut is like, in the, the, the spring, it's like, you know, free, it'll move freely and everything. That's it. When you have it on, you get oil on it, you get dirt on it from driving it, and it just makes it stupid hard to, to move it around. So, measuring, it's really easy. So, basically, the way I'll do it is I'll get the bottom of the measuring tape right here, and I'll put it on the bottom right here. So, basically, it'll look like can you open it up like this so i'll measure it from the bottom right here to at least the top of the, the lock ring up there and then whatever this is if i like the height then i'll just copy it to the other side but that's basically the way i measure it i'll go from here it's like the, uh, the top of here anyways yeah i just had to measure on my own real quick just to see where it was at so usually that's what i'll do so i'll usually just measure it take a picture that way but in case i go too low or if, you know if anything happens i could go back to the way i had it so a lot of people use spam wrenches to lower the coil but i mean you don't really need to i mean depending on how you know how freely it spins so to start off this bottom lock ring right here you got to hit it well, I hit it because, you know, I use a flathead on a hammer just because, you know, I don't, it, there's no space. So I don't feel like fucking, you know, putting my hand in here where there's no space and hitting my hand, getting frustrated. So I'll just fucking get a hammer, flathead, oop, and then just, you know, hit it right there to kind of loosen the ring and then move it. I want to say this is counterclockwise. All right. So usually the way I do it, I move the little bottom lock ring to like, let's say right there. All right. So. I'm pretty much going to drop the, the the whole spring, you know, the coil, move it, so I'm going to go that much slower. I don't know how much that is, but usually I'll just do it right there. So now what you want to do is, I think it's, which way, counterclockwise, twisting it like this. I believe that's the way you do it. So let me see real quick. Give me one second. Let me see if I can, uh, oh, shit. Yep, that's not going to work. Let me see if I can get Fabian real quick. Alright, so I got Fabian in the camera right now recording. So basically, I'm, I am moved the log ring up to right here. And this this little gap right here, that's how much I'm going to go down. I, I haven't measured it yet because, you know, I, I, don't, I don't measure it. I'll just, you know, move it, you know, wherever. And I'll just fucking try right there. So, if I'm not mistaken, I think you lower it to the right. And as you guys can see, you don't need the spam wrench because for me, my coil actually moves a little bit freely. So, watch come in here real quick. Come, come like like in closer is it stop no no keep going oh, it's not like coming closer so if you guys can see i can actually twist it so 
I believe I'm lowering it. Can you see it move? Yeah. So now I'm just gonna move it all the way to where the lock ring touches. I'm not even gonna touch this. I'm gonna move it the whole, you know, I'm gonna make it go there. So I'm gonna drop the car basically till it gets there. Thank you, Bateman. Anyways, so now that I lowered the, you know, the, the whole coil back down, as you guys can see, I closed the gap right there. So I'm not gonna tighten it yet. I'm just gonna hand tighten the, uh, kind of snug it with my hand, the little lock. And then from there, oh, before anything, I ha if, it's, if it's really difficult to move it, I highly recommend spraying, you know, dumping the shit out of it with uh, WD-40. Or if you guys have that little hole, right here i don't know if you guys can see it just spray it in there that, that's usually what i do and i let it soak for a couple of hours and then it'll move like freely anyways so i'll do that hand tighten it now let's put the wheel back on take the blocks off and drop the car and see where it's going to sit at then if i like it raise it back up and tighten it and then measure it and copy it on the other side so let's put the wheel on real quick all right so now that i take it off that's what it looks like right now now, before anything, I'm going to make sure that it clears when I turn the wheel. So, turn it all the way to the left. Go. Whew. All the way to the right. That's not all the way? Oh, get it, get it. Alright, go to the right, go to the right, go to the right. Alright, go all the way to the left. No, no, just go below, like slowly. Go slow, go slow, go slow. Go. A little more, a little more, a little more. A little more. All right, straighten it up. Is that all the way or no? No? Oof. Yeah, so that's how I weld my fitment again. Actually, this is how my front used to sit. Back when the car was black, that's exactly how the front would fit. But I don't know, I'm not really trying to ruin this paint. So now that I kind of like the way it is, it's kind of, it's not bad there. So I'm gonna jack the car back up tighten that bottom lock ring measure it and copy it on the other side uh, copy it on the other side and then we'll go from there all right so <clears throat> got it all situated now on the passenger side this is how the fitment currently looks i, I dig it so good or so hard i don't know how to say it but <clears throat> yeah talk about it. Be, believe it or not i was lower than this i used to be lower but i painted the car and i'm just trying to prevent like you know like damaging it and shit but this side clears, it's just the driver fender, I don't know. Maybe I gotta readjust the fender a little bit to uh, kinda like clear it a little bit. I don't know, but that's how it looks right now. With the new fitment, mint. I mean, it doesn't like rub too hard, it just rubs like a hair. All right, so I moved it from here to here. It slightly rubs. But, I don't know, I mean, I'm just gonna try it out like that for a day, and if it's too much, I'm just gonna raise it up maybe just a little bit enough to where I can turn it without hearing rubbing, but it still looks slow. But, anyways, that's how you guys lower coils, and I hope I have answered all you guys' questions for those who have asked me about Megan's, about, you know, how low you can go, um, you know, kind of like back roads to, you know, get more low. That's actually what I did. Once again, you know, I dropped the spring, um... I don't know how it works for for the coils where the springs on the bucket I'm not really too sure because you know this is a true coil so I don't know on that but true coils that those, those are the you know the ways that you can lower it but yeah I mean I think it looks fucking hard man this is never gonna get old ever but yeah there you guys have it um, smash that subscribe button drop a thumbs up on this video and I will be flipping my ball joints eventually. Pretty soon actually to get more camber in the front because this is not enough camber. And if I were to get a little bit more camber on the front, then, you know, I don't have to worry about any, you know, rubbing. But, oh, excuse me, a little hiccup. Anyways, there you guys have it though. Smash that subscribe button, leave a thumbs up on this video. Let me know what kind of videos I should do next. And yeah, see you guys soon. Peace.